Find the mass of the region bounded by y equals cosine x and the x-axis over the closed interval from zero to pi divided by two with the density function rho of x comma y equals two xy. To find the mass, we integrate the density function over the region r. Looking at the notes below, for differential a, we'll use dy dx. So the mass m is equal to the double integral over the region r of two xy dy dx. And now to determine the limits of integration, the limits of integration for y must be functions of x. Integrating with respect to y indicates we integrate vertically first. The region r is bounded below by y equals zero and above by y equals cosine x. The limits of integration for y are from zero to cosine x. The limits of integration for x are given from zero to pi divided by two. We begin by integrating with respect to y the antiderivative of two x y with respect to y is two x times y squared divided by two. The two simplify out, giving us an antiderivative of x y squared. Now we determine big F of cosine x minus big F of zero by performing substitution for y. When y is cosine x, we have x times the square of cosine x. When y is zero, we have zero, giving us the integral from zero to pi divided by two of x cosine squared x dx. Next, we'll have to perform a substitution for cosine squared x. Recall cosine squared theta is equal to the sum of one and cosine two theta divided by two, which we can also write as one half plus one half cosine two theta. So let's write the integral as the integral from zero to, to pi divided by two of x times one half plus one half cosine two x. And now let's distribute. We have one half x plus one half x cosine two x. And now let's break this up into two separate integrals. We have the integral from zero to pi divided by two of one half x dx, and then plus the integral from zero to pi divided by two of one half x cosine two x dx. The first integral requires the basic power rule. The second integral requires integration by parts. Integrating one half x, we have one half times x squared divided by two, or one fourth x squared. And now for the second integral, we need to use integration by parts. I've included the formula below. Let's show our work here on the side. We have u equals one half x and dv equals cosine two x dx. We differentiate to find du. du is equal to one half times dx. We integrate to find v. v equals the integral of cosine two x dx, which requires u substitution where u is equal to two x, du is equal to two dx, indicating one half du equals dx. Writing the integral with respect to u, we have cosine u and dx is one half du, which indicates the antiderivative is one half sine u plus c, which in our case indicates dv is one half sine two x. And now I can perform integration by parts. We have plus u times v is one fourth x sine two x and then minus the integral of v du, v times du is one fourth sine two x dx. And the limits integration of course are still from zero to pi divided by two. And now to integrate one fourth sine two x, we need to perform u substitution again. So du is two dx, indicating one half du 
equals dx. So writing the integral with respect to u, we have 1 fourth and then 1 half du sine u. The antiderivative is negative 1 eighth cosine u plus c. With respect to x, we have negative 1 eighth cosine 2x. So let's write this as 1 fourth x squared plus 1 fourth x sine 2x, and then we have minus negative 1 eighth cosine 2x, which simplifies to plus 1 eighth cosine 2x. And now we'll finally determine big F of pi divided by 2 minus big F of 0 on the next slide. We first determine big F of pi divided by 2. Notice for the angles in the sine and cosine functions, 2 times pi divided by 2 will simplify to pi. And then we have minus big F of 0. And now simplifying, the square of pi divided by two is pi squared divided by four, and then times one fourth, that gives us pi squared divided by 16. And then we have plus sine pi is zero, and then cosine pi is negative one, giving us minus one eighth, and then minus zero plus zero, cosine zero is one, giving us minus one eighth. Simplifying one last time, we have pi squared divided by 16, minus two eighths, which simplifies to minus one fourth. And this is approximately 0 0.3669. This would be the mass with the given density function bounded by the region R. I hope you found this helpful.